Welcome everybody to a brand new video. Today we will be heading up north to explore one of the most naturally beautiful places in England and no I'm not talking about Blackpool. No I'm talking about the Lake District filled with mountains, lakes, rivers, the whole shebang. Let's go. What better place to start off the adventure than in the heart of the Lake District in Windermere, the largest and the most visited lake in England, which has inspired many writers like William Wordsworth, Beatrix Potter, as well as many others. So here behind me is Bell Isle or Bell Island, which is actually, I think, the largest island in Windermere, uh, the Lake of Windermere. And this is actually privately owned. And the story goes that uh, back in the Roman times, there actually was a Roman building or some kind of structure built by the Romans here, as the Romans had quite a big presence in this area uh, going back then. And as you can see, there is a building over there which was inspired by this story, which is meant to look like um, a Roman pantheon or a Roman building in general. Then we headed over to the town of Keswick, which I still have no idea whether I'm pronouncing right. So immediately you can stop off for a nice bed and breakfast and have, have some tea up there. You've got a piri fresco. Oh, you can even get some homemade pies, look. One thing's for sure in Keswick, you're definitely not sure of shops to buy outdoor exploring gear. Literally every street, there's at least two or three everywhere. Take good old George Fisher here, for example, apparently the biggest in the UK. Never heard of it personally, but apparently so. Then across the road, you've got Nordic Outdoor. You can get all this cool, cool stuff. Look at that, dripped out. Now it's time for the highly anticipated by nobody other than myself room tour. Got a nice little fan, little chest. In here we have the bathroom, toilet, nice modern shower with some fusion waterfall shampoo, lovely, little towel, nice little painting, gorgeous. Coming through here, as you can see it's a kitchen, a little seating area and then the bed at the back. Here's the kitchen, what we got in here, anything good? A little bit of storage I guess. Um, some food shop with the Asda bags, little cheating area, little TV, some books, what we got. Any good authors, a bit of Arthur Ransom, good lad. Uh, who else we got? A bit of Christopher Wynn, great guy. Then as any British person would, I prepared myself a tea immediately after checking in. What a beautiful street, look at this. Just a normal residential street. And then the mountains in the background. I say normal residential, it's probably filled with a lot of B&Bs or holiday rentals. One thing I love about rural Britain is the, the buildings are always made out of the natural stone that's found in the local area. So take these buildings, for example, looks super nice compared to just regular brick that's often found in most parts of the UK. And yes, I am aware that my wannabe roadman balaclava is on the wrong way, but it was just in case any sheep got a bit cheeky. Like half five, six a.m. Over the mountaintops. Let's go. The visibility is amazing. Look at that. Hopefully, it's going to be a nice one. So we're climbing Blencarfa today, which is like the fourteenth or I think yeah I think it was the 14th highest peak in the Lake District so not a super high one today it's quite a cold one I think it's like one degree at like ground level um we thought we'd play it safe and to be honest I'm not fit enough to do any more so but these views already are absolutely bloody incredible and this is what the Lake District is all about and if it wasn't difficult enough already it's super icy on the track we're walking up. Good morning, ladies. 
And after the next clip, this is where more or less the audio cuts off due to the absolutely disgusting sound of wind absolutely destroying the microphone, as you can hear here. And then this is where the conditions got kind of crazy and it's what felt like tiny shards of freezing glass were being blown into our eyes. So we literally had to like look down, apart from me trying to look cinematic for the camera. And wow, just look at that trim and those red cheeks. Wow. Even the wall bottle is starting to freeze up. Sandwich didn't quite survive the trip up, but quick little pit stop. So after finally getting the energy to get out of bed, we've came down to Ambleside, which we've usually passed through uh, when we've been to the Lake District in the past. So Ambleside is located just north of Windermere and you'll often pass through it, but it's filled with lovely cafes, pubs, and this amazing building here. And then we stopped off in a cafe and I had the most beautiful cheese, bacon and cranberry sandwich. Even if the cheese was brie, which is the most Tory cheese ever. And then it began to rain, which became a common theme for the rest of the trip. Following on from my British stereotype of drinking tea, what else better to do when it's raining than to take shelter in a pub and have a drink? Tell me you're in the Lake District without telling me you're in the Lake District. The weather is absolutely fucking shit. And then we headed out for an Italian, which seems like a very common theme this day. It seems like all we did was eat, drink and eat. And then it started to snow as we were heading back home for the night. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to day three here up in the Lake District. And we're currently driving over to Buttermere Lake. And to get there, you have to drive over this like really sketchy road, to be honest. But the scenery is incredible. Look at this. We had a lot of snow last night, so all the mountains are completely topped up with a thick layer of snow. Um, and yeah, where we are right now looks quite good, but it gets really narrow on this road here. Um, so we're going to be driving all the way through through there. And surprise, surprise, about three quarters of the way there, a guy pulled over, put his window down and told us that everybody's having to turn around because the road is completely covered in ice. And then, oh my God, did we have a journey trying to get parked up at Rider Water and Grasmere. After about four or five attempts trying to fight off the Electro Arcteryx guys, the dog walkers and the ramblers, we finally managed to get parked. Now, one of the things you must do when you come to visit Rydal Water is visit Rydal Cave. Now, the story goes that the famous Viking Ragnar Lothbrok actually used to hide here away from the British. Yeah, no, I just totally made that up. It actually is a man-made cave made for the slate mines. But come on, it does look like there's going to be some kind of sacrificial table inside. Then after a couple of hours of sacrificing owners who don't have the dogs on leads to Freya, we then decided to take a nice slow stroll over to the village of Grasmere. And despite getting absolutely bloody drenched, it was a surprisingly nice walk.
Now, to mark the last day in the Lake District, we headed to an area that I'd never actually been to before, which was called Little Langdale. Now, this was super sketchy to get to with some super narrow roads, but as I'm a super good skilled driver, like all BMW owners, oh, wait, never mind. I managed to get there safely and even managed to get a parking spot straight away, which is fairly difficult here. To my delight, we came across yet again another pagan hiding place. No, it actually turns out to be another slate quarry dating back to the 16th century. But on a serious note, this was a really, really beautiful place and the surrounding area as well was absolutely amazing. Then we stopped off in the only pub in this little village that was definitely overpriced. I think the cider cost me like seven pounds but I had some really, really nice cheesy thing that this dog definitely wanted as well. And well, that was more or less it. So thank you for watching and see you next time.